How's it going, guys? Chris back here again with another episode of Historic Brawl. Today we're checking out the Mono White Commander that I talked about last time around. Uh, the deck is still bad. I have not improved it much at all. But, um... Yeah. Not extremely worried about that. So this is Danitha Benalia's Hope. So we had a Danitha card in the last Dominaria set, which was three mana, and it benefited from equipment somehow, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but first strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, it's a 4-4. When it enters the battlefield, put an aura or equipment from your hand or graveyard onto the battlefield. So the problem with this character as a commander is that, um, like some of the there are good equipments in white and colorless, but you kind of want, like, red, honestly. Which is why a lot of the equipment commanders are just red baseline. And it's kind of the same thing for, um, for auras. Like, when you're doing an aura deck, you kind of want green. So, ideally, the, uh, the best... Like, Artifact Equipment Commander would be Naya. Which, we do have a Naya Commander that is equipment. Uh, but, I have not gotten to fully brainstorm her yet. This one I went to, because Mono White has gotten a lot of support, right? Like, it's a color combination that is, uh, it has been receiving benefits. At the same time, though, uh, with a I'm not sure about it yet. So Luxor only benefits from plus one plus one counters. Uh, I don't know why I put it in the deck. Might be an oversight or I might have something that puts plus one plus one counters on something. I probably do. Like. Hmm. Which I kind of need to draw a card. Hey, there's my land. So Katilt is actually a pretty decent suit-up commander. A uh, suit-up card, right? Uh, but our commander is this one. And we don't really have anything to play her with at the moment. If we draw a land, we can Chromatic Ori. And then we can pay to draw cards, which is really rough. We'll put the gloves on her. Yeah, I keep wanting to use um, Halo Fountain somewhere, but it's just a hard card to use. Because a lot of your best creatures are not going to tap themselves. I hate Karn the Great Creator. I'll take that. Our actions determine the course of this. Karn's mainly in the deck to get things back from exile. You can only get our equipments back from exile, but that's in theory good enough, right? Wow, 
why is our opponent not playing anything? I have 51 life. You are acting unwisely. No clue what's happening there. Um, this is the first game I've ever won with this deck. That's something cool. Yeah, the the Dominator United honeymoon is kind of over at this point. Like the main the main facets of the set have been out for a while. Like if you go over and check out like the standard meta game at the moment, you have Mono Black as number one. Grixis Midrange is number two. Jund Windgrace is number three. And then Rakdos Midrange is number four. And Esper Midrange is number five. So if you look at all of those, uh, you might be able to tell that, um, like, black? Black and red in particular are really, really popular at the moment. Black is by far and away the most popular color in standard. And I like black. It's a good color, but... Um, It's really Liliana that's doing it, right? Well, Liliana and a couple other key cards, so... One of the reasons why I'm always a big fan of... Um, if it's a fight you want, then a fight you'll get. Of, like, MTG Goldfish that you can check out the standard metagame and when in that you can also check out uh, what cards are really popular in standard right now so if you look at the cards that are popular in standard right now uh, you have Meat Hook Massacre, Infernal Grasp, Reckoner, Buster which is colorless, Duress, Cut Down, Shieldred, Tenacious Underdog, Liliana, and Fable the Mirror Breaker so of the top 10 uh, Seven are black, two are colorless, and one is red. Uh, which is really bad. This is why I have Luxor in the deck, because I have a Planeswalker sub theme. I figured it out eventually. Uh, yeah, and if you look at like, the top creatures, you have a Shieldred, Tenacious Underdog, Graveyard Trespasser, Blood Tide Harvester, Evolved Sleeper, Chuni the Midnight Sky, uh, Corpse Appraiser, Erite Resurrected, and Sarah's Paragon. So you have one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight creatures. Mm, they traded in the Gideon for the Prosper. I don't really mind that. As long as they don't have a removal spell. That'd be awful. I say I don't mind that. That was probably a misplay. I'm too busy looking at the current state of magic, right? That's part of what we do in these videos, too. Talk about magic. And, um... It's not looking good if you don't like black. Um... Corvald, huh? Yeah, that's scary. I guess it was their commander, so he was bound to show up eventually. But I was kind of hoping he wouldn't show up uh, very soon, right? So we're going to swing in for seven. Gain seven life. End our turn. At least Corvald won't be attacking for a bit. Uh, they might just play a removal spell and then attack with him. 
that would make a lot of sense. But yeah, Standard is a bit black heavy at the moment. Um, so if we go one format back, we'll be looking at Explorer. Explorer is also kind of black heavy, but it's way more diverse. So there's only one, two, three, four, five decks in the top ten, as opposed to nine in Standard. Like you have Mono Green Elves and Boros Historic, Is It and Soul, Mono Red. So you're not fully fully black, but. Uh, and then if we go back to Historic, I bet Black's probably doing well there. Although it's not actually as bad as I thought it'd be. We're going to swing in for seven. Corvold will not block this. Up to 39. Yeah, so Mono uh, Historic's not as bad as I thought, but you have like five color humans, Azorius. You do just have Rakdos control and Rakdos goblins, Gruel goblins, that kind of thing. But you have a... Azorius Affinity and Azorius Urion. Like Azorius is it's in it's in the running, right? It's in the game. So Yeah, then you have like Mazes in combo. Oh, that's a cool deck. I wanna try that one. I have literally played this deck. Uh my build was not running Hydra Crisis, but yeah, it probably should have been. So they're attacking him with Corbald, which is dumb because uh, first strike is the thing. Um, and they had an answer. Well, that makes sense, right? Luckily, we have a bunch of mana, so we can just get everything going again. I don't think we can get everything going. We can probably get at least two things going. You know, Denison is actually a really good blocker. Rhino shield counter probably. I'd go shield counter on Zatora. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Well, it's stupid to destroy an equipment because eventually I'm going to have to recast Danitha. But I guess it lets you go into the air, right? So that's not that bad. Yeah, I'm going to build this uh, Mazes in Combo deck when I am done with this episode. This is our game two, if I'm correct. It's going to take our opponent a while to eat through our life total, though, right? So next I'm on a Hedron. Crack it, probably. That's going to be a lot of mana, but we have, um, we have 13 mana, so we might be able to do something afterwards. We might not. You know, they're very generous in giving me back my stuff. I have five mana left over. I really should have played Dream Sohedrin. Uh... So we have a 7-7 seven, seven Danitha again. These two, this equipment and this aura have just always been on her, which is nice. <laughs> well, that's a little less nice.
I'm close to being dead. I'm pretty sure I'm close to being dead. To be fair, Corvald's a really powerful commander. I do like Corvald. Uh, he's a bit, it's a bit toxic, but and eh, who doesn't like a bit of toxicity? Um, I say that I was just complaining about standard being too black, right? That sounds wrong, but it's about the color, right? The color and magic. Uh. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it is my favorite color, though. Like, I, it's weird. On the one hand, I want it to be a good color because at the same time, a lot of my favorite cards and color combinations are black-based, like Golgari, Rakdos, Grixis. Like, those, are, those colors are my jam. Um, at the same time, if it gets too big, it just gets shot to all hell, right? Like... Simic during Oko's time, it got really, really too good. And as a result, like the top Simic cards just got shot out of the water in every format imaginable. And to be fair, it wasn't necessarily that it was just because they were too good in the formats that they were in. It's because the cards in general were too good. And I don't think that's the case with the black cards we have in standard at the moment. Like, they're good, but they're not, like, homogenizing good. At the same time, I'm a little worried that, uh... That at some point, wizards might try to take the shake-up too far. Jump against the Rat Colony deck. Led by Marinar. I like Marinar. Although I have not said his name very well, have I? Let's get some brass knuckles going. When you cast a spell, copy it. Well, that's just dumb, isn't it? That's just dumb. Alright. We didn't cast it, so we... We'll never get double strike out of it. It is literally just brass knuckles. <laughs> it's flavor text. Um, uh, so we're going to try to draw a card since we've decided to take the flavor route. I don't know, it's just... I was looking at my hand and I saw a mana value of 4 and a mana value of uh, 3. I saw a mana value of 4 and I saw a mana value. Hey, goodbye hand. 0 or less. Okay. We rolled a... Don't know. I'd like to draw a card, opponent. Yeah, I saw the mana value of four, and I saw the mana value of one. I'm like, well, this is obviously a better deal. Get four free mana versus one free mana? Mm. Didn't work out for me, though, did it? So Danitha eats a rat eat just two rats every turn. But I don't know how you're going to win, opponent. Yeah, I already have good ones. I'd rather have double strike, honestly. Uh, We're getting 10 life with this. Actually, we're only getting 5. Right, that's how double strike works. I don't know how cards work. I want to roll 20, please. 13. Draw two cards. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm not complaining. 
Our Gideons are not castable though because they require white mana. You may take your pick of Gideon. I feel bad for blaming the Rat Colony deck. Like a big life linker. Gotta move my knuckles around. And my knuckles actually do provide double strike now because of Hadvar, the god of battle. This is a prime day for uh, justice. Cancel. Now we can use a deck of many things and get a 20. 17. Draw two cards. Okay. That's gas. They both have double strike, so we're good. If I had a white mana left over, I could actually untap Hadvar too. To be good. I never activated Gideon. Uh, I just played him. Like I said, my mind is a little out of it. So this is a May option, but I'm not getting the May. I am not quite Rats have fear. I put the mace in the deck because it looked good uh, and I remember it being okay and standard but at the same time now that I'm looking at it it's um not good is it don't have mana for deck of many things but I can make a token opponent's out though well, we won two out of three games with a deck that I consider pretty bad. Uh, it's a benefit of playing later at night where you don't have as much competition. Uh, but either way, thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy, remember to leave a like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now.